Welcome back. I'm Michael. You're listening to The Michael Dresser Show. Mita Tuzzi with us, the author of Keys to Success at School and Beyond, Seven Tips for Study Skills. Oxford graduate reveals the secrets, the secrets to success. He's a graduate from Oxford University, a renowned co-author of a scientific research paper published in the Journal of Sound and Vibration. He placed on the top 5% of students while studying at the Danish Technical University and achieved 100% of many of his challenging technical subjects. He's proven study techniques have helped many students, many students worldwide, to achieve success. In his book, again, Keys to Success at School and Beyond, he uh, helps students realize their true potential as well as tracing the path, tracing the path to achieving the goals both in school and in life. And let us say, uh, Mehdi, hi, welcome to the show. Thank you, Michael. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Thank you. And thank you so much for being here. You know, when it comes down to it, I want to I want to uh, take this a step further. The idea for the book stems uh, with his own realization that there are many aspects of studying that university students are not aware of during their schooling, which can, in fact, facilitate the process and make the entire experience much more enjoyable and productive. So what we're really saying here is students go to school, but they're never taught all of the different aspects of the foundation of what they study and how, not so much what they study, but how they study and the results. We really don't know how to study, do we? No, we don't actually. You know, um, a lot of this, I met a lot of students who, you know, who go to school, college, university, and uh, after a few years, they say, you know, I wish I knew this, I wish I knew that. So, um, you know, uh, it took me 15 years to reach a point to want to write this book and one year to finish it. <laughs> so 16 years in total <laughs> to write this book. But, okay, but what did you find as the, you know, the common denominator? What was that missing link for most students? Well, you know, um, I, there are seven elements or seven keys to success. You know, um, you know I, um, I decided to write it in a simple and, uh, you know, clear way so people can understand it uh, very quickly. So I would say first you have to discover your learning styles. There are seven different learning styles. For instance, if you want to study math and uh, you want to see how you learn the best way possible the math, so you, for instance, you want to see if you are a social learner, what you do is uh, you go join a group, go uh, study in a team, see if you learn better that way. Or, for instance, if you want to see if you are introvert or you learn better by yourself, you go to a quiet room, uh, sit down and study and see if you learn better that way. Or you could be a combination of both. Okay, now, but, but the learning and, in and of itself, do you, do you have to, and through the book, obviously, it's going to allow us to recognize what pattern we have. But that is very important, isn't it, to establish your pattern of learning? Yeah, the pattern of learning gives you an indication of uh, how you learn best. And I would say the second key is uh, to, uh, you know, to cope with stress. Because stress is a major part of everybody's life, especially a student. If you know how to manage it and how to minimize it, you can be successful at school and life. And, um, you know, um, because everybody has a stress in their life. And, sure. um, you know, managing it is important. And the third thing, is, I think, is friends who you befriend yourself, who's around you, what is your environment. I mean, when it comes to friends, I would say either they accept you for who you are or they don't. So uh, why not, you know, befriend people who have shared the same interests? And I would say the fourth key is the persistence. Even if you don't have persistence, you can develop it within you. So, um, and, uh, and it's easy as three steps how you can develop persistence. Let me hold you up just for a sec. Persistence, and there are two things, stress and persistence. Persistence is so critically important. Most people start a project and they don't finish. And I would venture to guess the reason that they don't finish is because the value for finishing is less than the value for going out and doing whatever you're going to do. You know, we live in a very fast-paced world today, and for somebody to sit down and take an hour and, and study and do something is very hard. Yeah, it is indeed. It is indeed. You know, uh, persistence is such a vital quality that uh, I decided to put in three steps, three main steps. One is to keep a positive mind. Two is to keep trying. And th three is to keep a role model. 
you know, I, I, for myself, you know, I have Thomas Edison as my role model because he famously said that when he invented the light bulb, that I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely no. And, and loud and clear. Let's go back to stress for a moment. What are some of the things that you talk about too? Or what do I learn in the book about handling stress? Well, if I can put it in one sentence, is switch your thinking when you deal with stress. Switch your thinking. Think about something else. And the way you can do it, let's say you are stressed, you go for, if you can, go for 30 minutes walk, daily walk. Sit quietly for 10 minutes somewhere where you are not disturbed. Just, just that 10 minutes a day can, uh, can, you know, minimize the stress. Or you can see the positive sides of some problems. Let's say you miss a deadline. So what you do is you see, okay, I missed the deadline. What was my mistake? What do I learn from it? See the positive sides of the thing. And I always say the laughter, as we all know, laughter is the best medicine because laughter increases oxygen and blood flow to your body. Sure, the mood-changing chemicals that are established when you laugh, uh, or even smile. Yeah. But most importantly, with stress yeah. also, uh, it, exercise. Get it out of your system. Yeah. Because there, there's so many people who get stressed, and they, they try to sit down, and they try to meditate, and they try to get into that now moment. And it's so very hard. And I would venture to guess that if you got out, and if you did something physical for five or ten minutes, if you ran around the house, it allows That's you right, to get yeah. rid of a lot of those things, and it slows down and allows you to center. But one of the things that the, the very first thing about getting rid of stress is do something physical, exert yourself, because stress can't stay there. That's right, and that switches your thinking to something else when you do physical in reinforcing that you are doing something else, and then later on you can return to your work with fresh mind. Sure, it keeps you quote unquote from lying to yourself. You know, <clears throat> you're you're stressed. <laughs> And you say, well, I'm going to be calm. Well, you're not calm. So go do something that will get you calm and then tell yourself you're calm because your mind knows when you're lying to it. That's right, yeah. <laughs> when it comes down to okay, let, let's continue on. I just, every once in a while, let's, uh, let's stop because it's extremely important. Stress is important. We're so stressed today, I would venture to guess that a good 90% of the population out there, no matter what, to what degree, they're, they're stressed. And then the other side is, you're right, it's persistence. And again, we live in a very fast-paced world. You know, everything's got to be now, 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 now. And <clears throat> that's not going to get what somebody wants. So we, we've got to be taught patience. And what I'm hearing through this, and stop me if I'm not right here, but what I'm hearing through this, it's, it's a learning process. You've learned to be a certain way, so that's how you are, and that's your reality, and that's how your life comes out. But if you can learn something, you can unlearn and relearn. And it's the relearning where the key is about how you deal with something. The exact same thing happens in your life with the exception of the outcome is completely different. Yeah, you know, persistence is one of the qualities that uh, people don't, some people don't realize that how important it is to, in our, you know, in uh, you know, every, every day's life. You know, um, Thomas Edison, he had 1,093 patents to his credit hmm. and his persistence was, um, you know, uh, one of the main factor of, uh, you know, uh, you know, doing all those inventions and that we still enjoy today. And, um, you know, uh, you know, in my book, I try to make it as simple as possible. And uh, for anybody, even who don't have this quality, they can develop it within themselves. As I said, you know, uh, you when you keep positive mind, and when you keep trying, and when you have a role model. You just keep going, keep going until you reach your goal. But that's the key. I think it's very important for most people if you get a role model because what that does, it, it, like parents, the right par I say the right parents, are role models. Mm. You know, you don't, you don't tell a child what's right or wrong. You model what's right or wrong, and then they obviously uh, do that for themselves. Good, bad, or indifferent, that's what they do. And role models are extremely important because if you see somebody doing something that you would like your life to be, then go ahead and mimic it, imitate it, because it's going to get you where you where where you truly want to be. Yeah, you know when we when we you know when we are faced with difficulties, role model helps us to overcome it by thinking, you no, know, he was or he or she was successful, so why not me? So it's kind of a kind of push when you are stuck in the mud. Sure, sure. Now the other thing too, when you really come down to it, uh, you, you talk about 
three questions that you should ask yourself if you approach a problem. What do we deal? I got a problem in front of me. What's my first reaction? What do I do to be able to move through this? Okay, you know, I, I divide it by three steps, three simple steps that worked for me for a long time and still working for me. Number one, you ask yourself, what is the problem? Number two, why is that a problem? And number three, how can the problem be solved? Once you identify the cause of the problem, usually, as I say, you know, 50% of the problem is solved. So by identifying the root cause of the problem, you already have half of the solution. So the next half is trying to find a solution. Yeah. Now, by the way, when we talk about a problem, I think one, and I've run into this, you know, many times over the years, people work on a problem for the most part that they don't have. And if you're working on the problem you don't have, you'll never fix the one that you do have. So you've got to cut through underneath what this problem looks like to see what it truly is. Then, then it's fixable. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, you know uh, I dedicated a, a chapter or a key to problem solving because it's such a vital skill nowadays. And, uh, you know, there are, uh, you can also solve problems subconsciously. Let's say before you go to bed, you think about your problem, and in the morning, when you wake up, give it five, ten minutes, think about your problem, and you usually have the solution. This has worked for me for many years, in all those ten years at the university, and uh, when I was uh, you know, uh, living by myself a long time ago when I was a child. Um, so uh, um, subconscious problem solving and conscious problem solving. Yeah, and by the way, subconscious problems can actually solve themselves you know, based on, you know, that, that shift in thinking that you have, that shift in something, because the unconscious mind, is just, it's just one image after image after image, and based on what that recognizable image in, there's an emotion tied to it, there's a reaction tied to it, and there's a behavior that causes all of this. And if you can change the image, then the reaction is different, and then when the reaction is different, your life is different. Yeah, you know... Uh you know, problems come in many forms, and when we are faced with a problem, we usually feel, okay, you know, I can't do it, it's too much. But, you know, mind works in mysterious ways. You know, uh, subconscious problem solving is something that you can, you can benefit while you sleep. It's kind of another department starts taking over. So, uh, you know, uh, it happened, you know, many times when I was a student, you know, I had the math, physics problem, other problems, and before going to bed, you know, I... Uh, I give it five or ten minutes thinking and slept on it, and in the morning I usually had the solution. It's, I mean, it's amazing, it's true, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a mystery, but it happens. You, you can use your subconscious to solve problems. Yeah, and by the way, and you don't have to sit down with that unconscious mind and say, what's the problem? You're right, it'll just come to you. Which is a, so many times we do that, that we'll think of something we don't have the answer to, and then the next thing you know, the answer comes up, and you don't know where it came from. No, no, you know, um, you know, a lot of my colleagues, for instance, they solve problems, engineering problems, when they go walking, taking a shower, you know, watering the lawn, listening to music. Suddenly, you have the solution. You know, uh, uh, they call it mindless activities that uh, boost the subconscious power. Uh, even you can, you know, um, washing and folding the laundry. Suddenly, you have the solution to your problem. No, oh, absolutely. I, I can't tell you how many times that I've, I've had something come up, couldn't find an answer to it. And at 4 o'clock in the morning, I get up, I'm walking down the hallway, and I get the answer. And, you know, that, that's really Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. It's called, like, let everything else go, and what the reality of what it is that, that's been bothering you will, will come to light. But you've got to be able to, number one, recognize it, and then allow it to be there. Now, we're starting to run out of time, so let me ask you this. I pick up the book, I read it page by page, cover to cover. What do I get? What do I, Michael, the reader, what do I get that I didn't have before I picked the book up? Yeah, I mean, what they would get is the skills to be successful at school and life in general. You know, uh, some of the skills, for instance, you don't get it at school or, you know, you, you haven't reached the stage that you get those skills. Let's say problem solving, teamwork skills, you know, um, dealing with stress, you know, uh, there are uh, discovering your passion, you know, all those once you read the book, you have, a, I would say, a tool set to deal with any problem, any project, or any issue in your life, and uh, uh, you can utilize it to be successful. You know, uh, I try to write it as simple as possible because 
I had this same problem for a long time, and um, uh, so I, I, it's kind of a step by step approach in a very simple way. And um, once somebody reads this book, uh, hopefully it will provide them all the tools that is necessary to be successful at school. So you don't come back five years down the road in schools and say, you know, I wish I knew that, I wish I knew this, my life would have been easier. No, I decided to do it once for all. So any student, anybody who wants to be successful at school, at their education and life, can read this book, can benefit from it, from my 16 years of experience, and uh, be successful. Wonderful. Maybe let me ask you this a website we can find you at and the book. Yeah, the website is keys to success at school.com also medi2z.com, and the book is available in Amazon, Barnes Noble, Friesen Press, and, uh, you know, uh, all the major distributors. Wonderful. And by the way, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate what you're doing in your time. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.